Hello everyone! Today we will be automating simulations for Houdini and Axiom using PDG with Deadline. We'll dive into TopNets and learn how to use wedges to fully leverage your network and give you another tool to art direct your simulations. When directing simulations, you may often find yourself in a position where you need to A and B different attributes, different directions to take a sim, which can get quite monotonous and time consuming and at worst time wasting if you don't catch what attribute impacted the sim in what way. Running simulations with wedging via PDG is a much more organized procedural way to handle this. Not to mention, if you have a multiple render nodes on your network with an Axiom license, you can run these sims in parallel, which will further speed up your workflow. Diving into our demo, we have a simulation object here with a pretty simple source and our Axiom solver. Checking our simulation tab, we have two parameters with attributes driven from our wedges in our top net. Looking at our top net, we'll see the full extent of the graph. If we zoom in, we'll see our two wedges up here. See the wedges have a wedge count of three each. It's creating nine full instances. And if we look, we'll see that these wedges are driving our parameters using a range from zero to one on disturbance and 0.1 to two for turbulence. All right, moving on. We have this ROP geometry output node here. This is where we grab our simulation output and write it to disk using this file path. We then render that using a ROP fetch. We're grabbing our OpenGL node and a ROP net here. This is essentially your flipbook output. Then we do an overlay text composite using this code here, which we'll, <laughs> we'll get back to. Uh, this will list out all of the wedges that we use in the simulation. We partition by attribute. This is basically just collecting all the frames. Uh, then we generate a mosaic. So our nine images or nine instances will be in one frame. We wait for that to complete and then export an MP4 for review and previewing. Now, before we run this, a few more things. You may have noticed up here, I have this add wedges above null set up. And that's because I'm writing a wedge index as the very last wedge to run. This isn't normally necessary. Uh, it already has a wedge index attribute built in to PDG. However, I'm doing this because I have this set up from Taylor Petrick over at Side Effects that allows us to automate our overlay text node without needing to manually write in all of our attributes. To do that, we have this control node here with some Python that uh, I do not know what, what's in there. I just grabbed this from his setup. And we also have this overlay text with this Python as well. Uh, I'll have this code in the description that you can copy into, and I'll have this file on the gum road for easy access. This way, no matter what wedges we introduce up here, they'll automatically be written onto the composite output. Next, our schedulers. Now, if you were just going to run this on a single machine on your main workstation, nothing else, the local scheduler will do everything you need it to, and that will be enabled by default. However, this is about deadline, and deadline is way more fun and tricky. So I have two deadline schedulers I added, a render and a simulation. Now, depending on how you want to run it, depending on the specs of your machines, you may want to set up concurrent tasks for rendering, but you probably don't want to for simulation, assuming you are doing this with Axiom. It might be possible to have multiple instances of Axiom running on a single machine if you have multiple GPUs. I've considered this. I don't yet know a good way to leverage that. So right now I'm only focused on one instance per machine. You may not need two schedulers, but I like to have one dedicated for rendering and one for simulation, which just makes it a bit cleaner. Uh, when you're setting up your outputs, be sure to select your scheduler you want to use 
on your uh, top scheduler override. Once you've done that, you're pretty much good to go. Assuming you've set up deadline appropriately, and I have my monitor up here. I have three workstations on my network currently. And if we hit uh, dirty and cook this node, we will see it fly. All right, that didn't take very long. In total, six minutes to run nine simulations across three machines. I did notice that one of my boxes did have a few errors, uh, not important errors. I noticed sometimes it just struggles to connect to the repository, um, but the simulation always comes out pretty clean. So to preview that, before we do a full on render, let's create a file node. Here we go. And how do we do this? I believe we can just grab our output file path, copy that, make that relative, and let's give it a update. There we go. So depending on which wedge we activate, we can go through each of our simulations. Now that may be all you need, but if you want to render it and have that in a nice flipbook mosaic, then we'll go ahead and export the rest of these. We could just go to the end chain here. First, we'll make sure that uh, we don't have anything in our simulation. So we do, okay. So another quick caveat with the setup with uh, TOPS PDG, you have to make sure that you go ahead and delete your previous output before you run it again. Otherwise, it will ignore that task, assuming you've already completed that, and then you won't get a new output. So first, we will go ahead and delete everything that isn't. Uh, here, I'll just put that in my music folder. Oh, no. Uh, we'll just delete that too then. So we'll delete everything but our cache folder. All right, now we are good to go. So we'll select our export MP4, right click, dirty and cook. Actually, we'll just cook it. And it should automatically create a new set of tasks for deadline. And there we go. All right, that's all there is to it. Let's check out our export. And there we go. Nine different simulations, all done over the network procedurally. Now, as you may have noticed, rendering these took over twice as long as the actual simulation, even with the OpenGL node. I'm still looking for ways to optimize this. It's not ideal. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. I'd love to refine this further. This has been a big part of my simulation pipeline for the last six months. I have at times generated hundreds of wedges, really art direct, get that look that I'm after. Anyway, that's all there is to it. Feel free to download this file on the Gumroad for free, and I'll see you next time.